Hey, welcome to my channel and to another meal prep. Now, if you'll notice, Miss Flair's not covered up and her light's not on. That's because she slept on my chair last night on the back. I sleep in the recliner and she sleeps on the top back there and I cover her up. So her alarm went off and I was trying to record. So I started over just because I had just started anyway. What I do is I go over there and I peek under her blanket because she's got a little piece of a blanket she sleeps under. And if she's got her eyes shut, I just leave her. I will leave her over there as long as she sleeps. And eventually I'll peek under there and she'll be awake. Sometimes she'll crawl out from under her blanket. But anyway, anyway, you're here for the meal prep. What we're making this week, I think I got a good week ahead of me. Just a lot of just simple, delicious food. For breakfast, mini frittatas. They're just made in a muffin pan. Then for lunch, tuna noodle casserole with corn and some crock pot Harvard beets. I think I said it in the video when I was making them. I make my Harvard beets on top of the stove with sliced beets, you know, canned beets. These are made in the crock pot with whole beets. Oh my gosh, <laughs> they're delicious. <laughs> I, I, I was skeptical, did not know how it was going to work. Worked beautifully. And then for snack, apple spice oatmeal muffins. And I think I said in my, I'm pretty sure I did say in my meal plan that I couldn't think of, oops, I'm sorry. I couldn't think of things to make with the exception of the beets being new. These are other recipes that I, I have a notebook where I keep my prep. I, I make a little word document of what I prepped that week. And I've been doing it for over a year. Before. I wish I had them all before that. But when I thought about it, it was like over a year ago. So I was flipping back through that book trying to get some inspiration. And the, the frittatas and the tuna casserole and the, the muffins, they were all in there. And I thought, oh, well, I forgot about y'all. I like y'all. Let's make y'all. <laughs> so that's what we got this week. Now, let's just turn around and get started cooking all that good food. To make the frittatas, spray a 12 cup muffin pan, and I've already chopped up my ingredients. You need about a quarter of a bell pepper. These are just some of the little pepper strips that I bought that I still have not eaten all of them. So I just estimated this is a quarter of a green pepper. Quarter cup of chopped onions, and a third cup of chopped mushrooms. I didn't buy a whole pack of mushrooms because I wasn't going to be eating them. I was going to be eating these frittatas. So I'm just using canned mushrooms. You can use whichever one you like. And then three ounces of shredded cheese. Any cheese you want to use. Now all we need to do is just go through and add our vegetables to each little cup. You can see I don't use I don't use as many green pepper well they're not green peppers but <laughs> peppers as I do onions because onions is my favorite and peppers is not peppers are not whatever so we, we're going to do that with all the vegetables then we want to add the cheese so if you can see over here on the side I have already beaten up 12 eggs I, I beat them up really really good added some salt and pepper I don't think I have salt and pepper written on my website but do that to taste and then we're just going to fill each muffin cup I think it I think it goes about three quarters full if you follow the amounts of vegetables and cheese I think if you fill this three quarters full it's enough to go around here at the end you can go back and fill any that look a little less with the bit you got left, but that makes the perfect amount if you go three quarters full. Now this will go in a 350 degree oven, which we already have from our apple cinnamon muffins, for about 20 minutes. Here they are straight out of the oven. You can see how they rose up, some of them. And that's a good reason why you don't want it really any more than three quarters full, because... Well, you can see how sideways they go. <laughs> they will taste the same. But I just wanted to show them to you straight out of the oven. 20 minutes. For the Harvard Beets, this is a Joanna Lund recipe. I'm switching it up just a little bit. She calls for a couple things that I don't normally put in my Harvard Beets. I make mine on the stove. And when I do, 
well, I'll show you the beets in a minute. In here, I have a quarter cup of white vinegar and a quarter cup of hot water. And to that, we need two tablespoons of flour. And I'm guessing the hot water is maybe to dissolve the flour and the sugar substitute. So I'm going to whisk that a little bit. And then a half a cup of your favorite sugar substitute. Hers was sugar twin, so that tells you how old the cookbook is. I used to use sugar twin back in the 80s when I thought I was going to lose some weight. <laughs> back when I wish I had tried, even though I was not even big. Anyway, that's not why we're here. Half a cup of your favorite sugar substitute. I am using the Truvia Sweet Complete. That is my new favorite. So I'm just going to whisk this until I think it's dissolved. This is what she does different from me. I always use the beet juice to make mine. And I put my vinegar and sugar and thickener in the beet juice. She says rinse and drain these two cans of whole beets. So I'm doing it like she said. I rinsed them and drained them. Hold on, let me move this. If I can move this without making a mess. Hold on. Okay, then we're just going to pour our little mixture over the top. I honestly didn't think it's going to be enough to cut them. I'm using my small crock pot, so I think that's probably helping. So let me see if I can maybe get those down in there. And then we're just going to cover this and cook it on low six to eight hours. What I'll probably do is I'll probably come in every little bit and give it a stir just to make sure they're all coated. So six to eight hours, I'll see you. All right, this is after seven hours. I know it is kind of like not completely thick, but normally when things like this set up and get cool, they will thicken on their own. So I'm going to stop it here because I think it looks um, pretty good to me. To start our tuna noodle casserole, we want to make the cream soup. This is my homemade cream soup. Start with one and a quarter cups of water, half a cup of the mix, stir it to blend it, and then we're just going to cook it until it's thick. Now let me stir this and I'm going to show you a little trick that helps me. I used to make this Back when the kids were little, and I was trying to save all the money and do all the things. This is one of all the things I used to do. It's very handy to have on hand. Plus, you know what's in it. And the recipe is on my website. Now, we would just let this cook, like I said, until it's sticking. But I want to show you. I keep it in a, a jar. You can see I'm just about out. But this is my little trick. On the inside of the jar, I write how much mix and how much water because my memory is shot. So I don't have to pull up the recipe. I know how to cook it. I just have how much it, it takes to make it inside the lid. So I thought I would just share that little tidbit with you. So I'm just going to let this cook. While this is cooking, I have my water starting to come up to the bowl to do our noodles. But we want to go ahead and get this started. The soup is ready. Now, I want you to know there won't be any lumps in yours if you watch it while you're cooking it. I was washing some dishes and I forgot that I was cooking it. And I heard it boiling, pop plopping. You know how that makes that little noise. So, but you can see how it thickens up like a can of cream soup. And this, mine just makes cream of chicken. You can add mushrooms in it or celery or whatever you want to add to it. So we'll set, we're going to set this aside somewhere. Now my water is boiling. I want to add a good little amount of salt. More than you think you'll need. To flavor those noodles. And if you see what I'm holding, I'm holding a piece of cracker. Just put you a little piece of saltine cracker in your salt, even if it's in a salt shaker, and it won't clump up on you. 
we're just going to add eight ounces of egg noodles. The noodles have cooked. I went ahead and drained them, put them right back in the pot. No need to mess up another dish. We're going to add our cream soup, whichever one you decided to use. And mix this in a little bit. Now it may come at the end. We need to add a little milk. I might have should have made it a second. We'll see. It looks like... Okay, now I'm going to take one can of sweet peas, two cans of tuna, and I'm just going to drain them right in the same strainer that I used for my noodles. So hold on just a minute. Here's the peas and the tuna. We just need to mix that in. Ooh. You can add more salt if you want to. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Hold on just a minute. This is creamy to eat right now. What you can do, if you want cheese, you can put this in a, a baking dish, put some cheese on it, and pop it in the oven until the cheese melts. So I'm not going to do that. But this is creamy to eat right now. But this is going to sit in the refrigerator for several days. So what I want to do is add just a little milk to thin it out because the noodles and all will set up listen you may even need to add some milk to it on the day that you reheat it in the microwave and that's okay too maybe just a little more alternatively you could use two cans of cream of mushroom soup I was thinking maybe I should have but I think this milk is going to do just fine I didn't have enough mix to make another batch anyway cream of mushroom cream of chicken i don't know cream of whatever kind of soup you want <laughs> put it that way so i think maybe that'll do fine right there we'll start on our apple spice oatmeal muffins three cups of old-fashioned oatmeal and to that we want to add a teaspoon of baking powder a teaspoon of apple pie spice, which this is my homemade version, and I think we're going to get just enough. You can buy it, or the recipe is actually linked on this recipe on my website. And that, I'm going to have to make some more of that. And then a quarter teaspoon of salt. And it doesn't matter, we, we don't need to mix it. We're just going to set this aside and start on our wet ingredients. For our wet ingredients, I have already beaten two eggs. Then we're going to add a quarter cup of brown sugar. You can use regular brown sugar. I'm using the Trivia Sweet Complete Brown Sugar Substitute. I really, really like it. To that, we're going to add half a cup of plain, non-fat Greek yogurt. Mix it in really well. Then we're going to add a half a cup, which is one little container of plain unsweetened applesauce. No, does it call it plain <laughs> unsweetened applesauce? Then one cup of unsweetened almond milk. And then I've already added two teaspoons of vanilla in the milk just to make this go a little quicker and mix it together really well now we want to add our dry ingredients stir it together get our whew, splashing everywhere get our bacon powder and apple spice mix uh, apple pie spice there we go get it all blended in now we are going to set this aside while we peel and chop our apple. Two small apples. All I have is one large, so that should even out. So I will do that and be right back. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it soaked up in the oatmeal, made it a little thicker. 
that's what you want to happen. That's why we're letting it sit while we chop the apples. Now here, that's about the size. Let's chop it small. Then we just need to stir these in. I have already sprayed my muffin pan. And I'm just going to use my large cookie scoop. It'll probably take more. Maybe not. But we're going to fill up each one of these. It will make 12 muffins. So if you have to go back and add more, then go back and add more. But we're going to fill these up. I got them all filled up. Now these are going to go in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes because it's a very moist batter. The muffins are done. They went a half hour. You can see they got a little spring in their steps. So we're just going to let them hang out in here probably about five minutes before we turn them out onto a piece of wax paper. Well, I did my thing again where I was talking and did not have the camera on. I divided the casserole out. I got four. I was not sure with these containers. These are the ones you can't see it. This says two cups under there, one cup, one cup. I was not sure after you add everything into the casserole, I planned for two ounces per serving, so that'd be four servings. But once you get everything in, and these were new containers, wasn't sure how far they'd go, but that shows you. It's a good two cups, four servings. So there you go. Now I'm going to take these over to the crock pot and add my beets. I was able to get four beets per serving, and that left two for Cook's Treat. Cannot wait to eat them. These are delicious. If you like Harvard beets, oh my word. Harvard beets, just thickened up sweet and sour beets. That's all there is to it. Fancy name. And then I just cook some corn in the microwave with just a dab of butter. So there are our lunch plates. Nice and colorful. I think it's going to be really, really good. So hang on and we'll show everything we got. All right, here we go. Here is breakfast, our mini frittatas. You can see how they suck down. That's why I wanted you to see them fresh out of the oven, how they rise, and then as they cool, they sink. So those are our mini frittatas. Here is our snack, our apple spice oatmeal muffins. Store these in the refrigerator. They will um, last longer in the refrigerator. They're a little bit too moist to stay at room temperature. And then our lunch trays, tuna noodle casserole, corn, and crock pot harbored beets. All the recipes will be linked below. So, hope you enjoyed this video. I think I have a good week ahead of me. Gonna have a couple of those frittatas for breakfast and a, and a muffin, I think a muffin. Maybe some grits. You'll see on my video tonight, how about that? Okay. That'll do it for me, and I'll see you in my next video.